Hello, welcome back to Wolf and Friends Gaming. As you liked our last video, Top 5 Adaptational Badasses, this is the opposite, Top 5 Adaptational Wimps. These were characters that were previously powerful in their former media or stories, and are now basically wimpified when they came into video games, and are less stronger than they were when you originally saw them. Let's start things with our number 5. Glenn from The Walking Dead, the video game by Telltale. In the show and the comics, Glenn is more of a smart kid who's brave enough and knows the layout of any place and is pretty much known as the scavenger, the stealth guy, the sneaky guy in the group. But in the video game, he's slightly less awesome than when we've seen him in other things. It's justified, though, since this Glenn has not yet become fully powerful and stronger than he is in the other show and the comics. This Glenn, in the, the Glenn in the show, well, is the stronger one and capable of killing zombies and actually basically fighting people and is brave enough to go out on his own a lot. But in the video game, he's not like the show's version of Glenn at all, or even the comic version, being more of a coward who's afraid to take on challenges head on, and instead of getting involved like he usually does, this one kind of sits in the background and is basically more of a supporting character rather than a helper of any kind. But yes, your character Lee ends up doing most of the work, while Glenn, who's supposed to be the most involved character, does not. Number four. Shockwave, from the Transformers video games, both War of Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, and possibly its future sequels. This Shockwave is not as strong or smart as he is in the show. In the show, actually, Starscream, who became an adaptational badass, Starscream was weaker, while Shockwave was the strong one, but in the video game, Shockwave is the weak one, while Starscream is stronger than him. Yes, it's, they flipped the roles, kind of, because in the show, Shockwave was treated as one of Megatron's most trusted and powerful Decepticons, being an insane scientist, but also a very competent fighter. Yes, in the show, Shockwave is much smarter, much more epic, and is actually one of the worthy Decepticons, while in the video game, they kind of downgraded him. For starters, in War for Cybertron, he just becomes a DLC character, Although they did get his original voice actor to guest star as him, which did kind of make up for and make him cooler. Then when he actually is involved in the story, he doesn't do much of anything, except he's more of a nuisance you have to get past before taking on Megatron and the much tougher Decepticons. Whereas in the show, Shockwave did not get taken down as easily, and actually survived a lot of attacks from the Autobots, and was a physical capable fighter. Well, in the video game, Shockwave, he is a medic, kind of, but we all know how useless the medics are in the war because you can't usually heal as fast as fight as fast compared to the other characters. Well, in the video game, get this, he actually created the Dinobots, the strongest Autobots ever to live. Yeah, good job planning that one out, Mr. Scientist. But yes, he basically did not plan ahead, and when he created the Dinobots, he gave them their... Dino, dino parts, basically, before he brainwashed them into serving the Decepticons, and actually allowed them to test their powers by fighting his troops. Great planning. So, here's our number three. The Velociraptors, from the Jurassic Park video games. Pick any Jurassic Park video game, whether it's Telltale's Jurassic Park the Game, the Lego one, or even the driving ones that you find at arcades, the raptors have diminished as a threat severely. Let's start with the arcade ones. Basically, you just take them down and drive by shootings, pretty much. Yeah, the raptors get killed gangster style, where you're just driving one of the Jurassic Park jeeps across fields and shooting them dead before they get to you. While in the movies, the Velociraptors were actually the scariest part in the films. Actually, they took down a lot of people and killed characters a lot, so like it was easy, and were treated as a significant villain in the film series before Jurassic World came along and turned them into heroes. But in the video games, 
Well, Telltale's Jurassic Park really diminished them. Like, you actually get to kill a few of the raptors, and they do kill one guy, and they do have the creepiness factor, but they're actually nothing compared to the surprise twist villain near the end, which is revealed to be a dinosaur created specifically by the scientists to weaponize for the military. Yes, the raptors were actually not considered weaponized for the military as they were in Jurassic World, and in the video games, something called the Trudons were more scary than them and more threatening. And, of course, we have the Lego Velociraptors, which, get this, the Velociraptors do not kill a single person at all in the video games. Yes, even Lego Star Wars was actually showed the deaths of main characters that happened. In Jurassic World, the Lego game, no one dies in the games, and the Raptors don't kill people, and they're actually ridiculous. They eat, they eat sausages and meats and get distracted easily and get beaten up like they're nothing. And, of course, they diminished as a threat as the video games went on until Jurassic World decided to save their reputation by making them heroes. But that didn't help make them any more of a wimps. Number two. Black Mask from Batman the Arkham series. While it can be argued that Black Mask is pretty much a wimp in every video game he's in, in the shows, the cartoons, and even the comics, Black Mask is an untouchable mob boss who's fond of torturing people and is, cannot go down easily in a fight against Batman, and he's an expert strategist. In the video games, he gets his butt whooped all the time. Whether it's by Batman, Catwoman, Robin, Nightwing, random tiger guards, even the Joker, and of course the Red Hood who ends up killing him off for good. Yes, and in the video games, Black Mask is not a credible threat at all. Instead, he's actually more of a nuisance to Batman, of course. And, of course, even the Joker actually beats him up a lot, and you don't really care because he's a mob boss, so he kind of deserves it. And this Black Mask, he got the mask burned into his skin, but in every Arkham game, he has a terrible role. He's just a character profile in Arkham Asylum. In Arkham City, he makes a cameo getting beaten up by the police. In Arkham Origins, we actually thought he would be the main villain. Then he gets beaten up by the Joker, and it's revealed that the Joker is the real villain, while Black Mask is a side mission. Then Arkham Knight topped it all by having him in a DLC where the Red Hood kills him. And now finally we come to our number one, Mothra, from any Godzilla video game that was ever created before the Godzilla game stopped being made. Mothra is one of Godzilla's greatest allies, a giant butterfly, but originally starts out as a larva who has to grow into a chrysalis to evolve into her ultimate form. In the video games, though, Mothra's role as a hero really took a hit. In the games, you have to start out as Mothra in her worm form, which makes her vulnerable to attacks and can be easily crushed like an insect. Ha ha ha. But Mothra is... Not very good to use. She's actually the weakest character in the game, having like very limited attacks and no effects on the bigger monsters, who are much cooler and better and stronger. Mothra is one of Godzilla's greatest monsters, though. She's supposed to be tough and can even put fear into other monsters, despite being looking not like that menacing monster you'd expect. And Mothra used to be so cool, but... Now the video game's really downplayed her, and it's really not helped by the very complicated controls in Godzilla games where you have to control giant monsters. Very hard to control, and even in her ultimate butterfly form, she stinks and gets taken down and killed easily. She can even be beaten on hard mode very easily by any monster you choose, which is really sad. So thank you for watching. We hope you like, su subscribe, and comment, and join us for more videos on Wolf and Friends Gaming.